Hi, my name is Tara Lynn Rose. I am a certified financial counselor with California Coast Credit Union. We're here today to talk about credit scores. We're going to go over the five main factors that impact your score. Once you understand this information, you can apply it to any credit history that you see, and you'll learn how to improve that credit score more quickly. The five main factors, 35% based on payment history, 30% is based on balances that you owe, 15% based on length of credit history, 10% on increase and new credit, and the last 10% is based on a variety of items. We're gonna give you some tips and tricks in each category. So we're gonna start with payment history. This is the single most important part of your credit score. It's 35%. What this is, is did you make your payment on time? Yes or no? It's very black and white. Whatever your minimum payment is, as long as you make that payment, you have fulfilled the contract that you signed with that creditor. That's what lenders want to see. We talk about late payments. If you are more than 30 days late, that gets reported to the credit bureaus. Once you have one 30 day late payment, that stays on your credit history for seven years. And it will also impact your score quite a bit. If you have a 700 credit score, one 30 day late payment will drop your score 40 points. If you're more than 60 days late, you lose 100 points in that 700 score. It will impact your score for two full years and stay on that history for seven. One late payment can make a big difference. If you feel you're getting close to that 30 day window, borrow some money, sell something, get a third job, do whatever you've got to do to get that payment in on time. When we're talking about your payment history, again, it doesn't matter how big that payment is. It could be $1.99, $199, $1,999, all we're caring about is did you make that minimum payment on time? You don't get more points for having a bigger payment. You don't get more points for making more than the minimum. All we care about is did you make that payment on time? Why is this so important? When lenders are looking at your credit history and they're looking at did you make your payment on time, if you go more than 30 days late, that means we had to call you. We had to write a letter. We had to chase you down to get our money back. That's not what we want to do. We want to loan money out to you, get that money back with interest so we can turn around and loan it out to somebody else. So if we see a lot of late payments on your credit history, that's a good indication that you're having difficulty making your payments and we probably don't want to loan more money to you to make it more difficult for you to get those payments in. The second most important part of your score is based on balances. This is 30% of your score. There are two parts to this. One is your overall balances. How much do you owe on your mortgage, your car loan, your credit cards, personal loans, student loans? If you have a lot of debt out there, that means you're relying on credit to supplement your income in some way. That kind of raises a red flag. The other important part of your score is the balance to limit ratio on all of your revolving lines of credits, credit cards. The credit bureaus want you to carry less than 30% of that limit on each individual credit card. What that means is if you've got a $1,000 limit, you never want to carry a balance higher than 300. If you've got a $500 limit, don't go more than 150. As soon as you go over that 30%, you can see a major drop in your score because it is 30%. The important thing to know in this category, the little trick, is what's important for your score is when that balance gets reported to the credit bureaus. It's not the due date, it's not when you make your payment, it's when your balance gets reported because that's what's impacting your score. We only report once a month on one specific day. Each creditor has their own reporting date. California Coast Credit Union, all of our credit cards are due on the 25th. We report our balances on the 1st. So say you've got a $500 limit with us and you pay it off in full on the 25th and then go charge a TV on the 28th and say, I'll pay it off next week when I get paid. On the 1st, we're gonna report that balance. And if that balance is over 30%, you can see a drop in your score in this 30% category. So it's really important for you to know when each creditor reports that balance so you can make sure that your payment gets posted and that you're not charging more than that 30% limit. I have seen one credit card paid down below 30%, bring a score up 30 points. This is a big part of your score. The other important thing in this is you do not have to carry balances on your credit cards. I hear that all the time and I just wanna dispel that rumor. You do not have to carry balances on your credit cards. But 
since payment history is 35% of your score, you do want to make sure that you're using your credit cards occasionally to make sure that you keep your payment history current. Because what we're looking at with your credit score is your payment history in the past two years. What you did three or four years ago, we want to see it. But if you take a look at your financial situation and what you were doing and what your income was and what your expenses were, it doesn't really make a difference in where you're at right now. It's probably pretty different. So we want to make a lending decision based on what your current situation looks like. So the more recent payment history you have, the better able we can calculate your risk on whether you're going to pay us back now. So again, do not have to carry balances, but you do have to use your credit cards occasionally to keep that payment history current. 15% of your score is based on how long you've had credit. So the tricks in this is make sure you don't close a credit card you've had the longest. If you have a car loan or a mortgage or a personal loan and you pay that off, that information is only going to stay on your credit report for 10 years from the time you paid it off or closed it. We only keep 10 years for the positive information. So after 10 years, if you close off the credit card you've had since you were 18, that item drops off and you lose a length of credit history as well. So don't close a credit card you've had the longest. That way your credit history will grow and grow and grow. The other part of this is anytime you're opening new loans, it does lower your average length of credit history, which is a part of this 15% as well. So space out the loan applications to make sure you're not grouping it all together and lowering that average length of credit history. 10% of your score is based on inquiries and new credit. An inquiry is every time you apply for credit, Someone like me requests a copy of that report to look at, and we're going to pull that from whatever credit bureau we use. That's going to put a hard hit inquiry on your credit report. We keep two years of hard hit inquiries, and what we're looking at is how many times have you gone and applied in the past two years. This can impact you 10% if you have more than three inquiries in six months or more than six in two years. Why does this impact your score? If you're out there applying for a bunch of things in a short period of time, there's usually three reasons. One, you are desperate to have credit. Your car broke down, you need to get money to fix your car. If you don't have enough money to get your car fixed, are you going to have enough money to pay back the new loan? Maybe you're applying for a bunch of things and getting approved for everything. So you have a bunch of new loans on your credit report with no payment history yet. So how can we calculate your risk if you don't have any payment history on these new loans? The other part is maybe you're getting denied for all the things you're applying for. So your credit score is only one part of any lending decision. We're also looking at, can you afford the payment? Do you have any money to live on after you've paid your debts? What does the market look like? There's a lot of other factors that go into a lending decision. So if you're being denied for a bunch of things that you've applied for recently, there's something else going on with your application and we want to take a closer look at it. Those are all red flags, which is why this impacts you in the 10% category. The other part of this is anytime you open anything new, we don't know yet how well you're going to be at paying back that debt. You don't have any payment history. You've got the hard hit, which cost you three to five points. You've lowered your average length of credit history. So anytime you open anything new, you're going to see a drop in that score until you've had about six payments reported. Once you've had six payments reported on that new loan, then we're like, okay, they're fine. They can handle this new payment. But until then, we can't calculate your risk. So the tip in this one is don't apply for things more than once every six months. That way you stay within the guidelines for the hard inquiries and you also have time for your payments to be reported on any new loan. Another part of this that doesn't impact your score but you will see on your credit report are soft hit inquiries. These are ones that don't impact your score. You can go and pull your own credit report 20 times a day. It does not impact your score. We want you to look at your credit history. We want you to make sure that everything on there is accurate. You also might have an account with someone who does pre-approvals two or three times a year. That is not a hard hit. Until you turn around and apply, then it turns into a hard hit. So you'll see both hard hits and soft hit increase on your credit report. Just remember, it's only the hard hit ones that impact you in that 10% category. The last 10% of what affects your score is variety of debt. This means the credit bureaus want to see how you handle all the different types of debts that are out there. 
car loans, personal loans, credit cards, department store cards, student loans. If all you have is a car loan and you don't make your payment on the car loan, you lose your car. That's a pretty big consequence. If you don't pay back your unsecured credit card, we're not gonna take anything from you. So if all you have is that car loan payment, we don't know how well you're gonna be at paying back unsecured debt. And if all you have is a credit card with a $25 minimum payment, how do we know you can pay back a $30,000 car loan with a $400 minimum payment? They want to see how you handle everything. So there's a catch-22. People always think that if you pay off your car loan, pay off your mortgage, your score is going to go up. When actually, next month, you no longer have a payment being reported in that variety of debt. So you will see your score start to go down once you pay off an installment loan. Don't despair. Creditors like to see paid loans. So you might have a car loan that you paid off three or four years ago. It's not helping your score anymore. But if you're applying for another car loan and you had no problems making your car loan payment before and everything else makes sense, you're probably going to get that car loan again. So we do want to make sure that you're understanding that that payment history in that variety of debt is important to your score. So just understand we want to see that variety of debt going on. The other part of this is who you borrow from. It's a very small part, but we do want to go over that. There are a lot of high-risk lenders out there. People who say no credit, bad credit, no problem, those are high-risk lenders. And if you are borrowing from them, you must be a risk. And since your credit score is all about risk, if you are borrowing from high-risk lenders, you will see an impact on your score. You're not getting as many points as if you borrowed from a reputable lender. So make sure that you are borrowing from reputable lenders, big banks, credit unions. That's what we want to see on your credit. This would be the only situation where I would recommend closing off the credit card you've had the longest. If the only way that you can get credit is to borrow from a high-risk lender, get that credit card. Use it once a month, pay it off in full. Payment history is 35% of your score. Balance availability is 30% of your score. Variety of debt is 10. So get that credit card, use it, pay it off for the next six months. Once you get a regular credit card, that would be the only situation I would say close off that high-risk lender because now you're looking at the long-term benefit of your score. Those are the main five factors that impact your credit score. Hopefully you can take this information, apply it to your own credit history. If you have any further questions, please contact California Coast Credit Union. Our toll-free number is 877-495-1600 or go to our website, calcocu.org. Thank you for joining us.